All right, in today's episode of the Supplement Lab, we're going to talk about plasma caps and all the other nitric oxide pathways that are not activated by plasma surge. Wait a sec. Did we launch a new product earlier this week? Get out of here. Bring it in. All right, folks. Psych, we're talking about thermal this week on the Supplement Lab. This is our new non-stimulant thermogenic weight loss aid on this episode of the Supplement Lab. Needless to say, it is a, a very interesting time right now. There's coronavirus sweeping the nation, canceling the Arnold and Expo West. Um, we got uh, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders that are going to be running for president. And we've also got a Mercury retrograde, which means all of our audio from the last time we recorded this completely got deleted. So we're going to get into talking about thermal, the interesting new ingredients in here. And I'm going to flip these babies around from last week, bring back this little chart talking about the browning of white fat cells. And then this one over here, this is what happens. This one here is a new ingredient that we'll talk about at the end because I, as interesting as that one is, probably the most interesting ingredient in this whole product. I'm gonna save it for the end so you stick around and learn a little bit more. So thermal is very simple formula. It's got five ingredients, five ingredients, so this shouldn't take long. Now, the first two are called choline, as we know before, as the form of vitacholines, the L-isomers, the good one. And then we've got L-carnitine, L-tartrate, and I'm gonna talk about the cool interaction that these two things have in, comp in combination together. Now, we know that choline is a precursor to acetylcholine, just as we know is carnitine is a precursor to acetylcarnitine. So that's kind of interesting. These things both have the ability to become acetylated in the body. However, they also have three methyl groups, which means they can also be methyl donors, which is kind of interesting. So they do have some structural similarity, but they can also be combined to work together to actually help preserve intramuscular carnitine levels, which is good because if you have high enough or completely at threshold intramuscular carnitine levels, your capacity and ability to burn fats is going to be enhanced due to the fact that L-carnitine is used as a fatty acid transporter to bring those fats into the inner mitochondrial membrane where they can actually get burned in by the process of beta oxidation. Now, in addition to this, uh, choline and carnitine are usually spent while you're exercising. So if you're undergoing some sort of intense training, your choline levels go down, obviously. It's that neuromuscular connection that choline's getting spent. And then the other thing is your intramuscular carnitine levels will also get spent. Obviously, you're going to be using that to be making more ATP, but the combination of them both has a conserving or preserving effect on the intramuscular carnitine levels. Now, in addition to this, uh, supplementation with both of these things increase the production of beta-hydroxybutyrate. Now, that's cool. BHB or beta-hydroxybutyrate is one of the most common ketone bodies that is actually found as a consequence of the breakdown of fats. So when they measure beta-hydroxybutyrate levels in plasma, what that's actually doing is it is an indicator of some sort of uh, free fatty acid synthesis, usually in the inner mitochondrial matrix, as I was talking about earlier. So that's good. It also increases the production of acetate, which can be exhaled by the body in a weird way of losing fat that way. You can actually lose fats through breathing out acetone or acetate. Um, and you can also acetylate other things and lose them in the urine, which is kind of interesting as far as a fat loss kind of perspective, because for the most part, our fat is lost through either heat expenditure, breathing out in the form of CO2. Obviously, when you breathe in that oxygen, it actually oxidizes the hydrocarbon chains, form CO2. The other possible way is you can lose fat from the colon and the gut if you take a lot of fiber and it's a fat binding kind of fiber and you can poop out some fat that way as well. So these are multiple different mechanisms of ridding the body of these extra hydrocarbon sources that get oxidized in various different kinds of ways that leave the body. Now, what's kind of interesting is the combination of choline and L-carnitine or L-carnitine L-tartrate in this case, 
is that it increases the urinary frequency of acetyl-L-carnitine as a byproduct. And this is an indication of what is referred to as incomplete oxidation of fats. Anytime you have an acetyl group versus a CO2 group, this is not as much of a, a combustion reaction that it would typically occur if it was going to be broken all the way down to CO2. So the carnitine can get reacetylated and it can get passed through the urine. This is just another different kind of way of getting rid of those carbon groups one at a time. So that's all I want to really touch on with that. Um, obviously, you know, the carnitine is the, the fat transporter for the mitochondrial beta oxidation. Choline is really good for the mind-muscle connection, but the combination of them both is something that's going to preserve intramuscular carnitine and promote more fat oxidation. And that's been evidenced by the, uh, the BHB levels that are increasing. So the next thing we're going to talk about is InnoSlim. InnoSlim is a really interesting ingredient. I think it got like the, the most innovative ingredient, like 2017 or 2018 at Supply Side West, or maybe it was uh, the, the Nutriwards or something. But anyway, it, it was recognized because there's actually a lot of science behind this. There's over a dozen in vitro studies where they're looking at cells, and, and there's a couple of in vivo studies and human studies as well that show that this thing has a positive effect on fat metabolism, and it does it in a couple of different ways. And even my, my sales rep, Ken, he actually hit me with his email, and he had this whole spiel, not just as a salesperson, but as his own personal testimonial, because he dropped 70 pounds in nine months, and that's pretty pretty commendable. But basically, step one of this uh, in Oslim, which is a combination of Panax, Noto, Ginseng, and also Astragalus, it works in the small intestine. Like many of the new live science ingredients do, they are very focused on this intestinal brush border, and what they found is with InnoSlim, it'll actually block carbohydrate absorption through the inhibition of a sodium-dependent uh, transporter called SGLT1. So it can inhibit glucose absorption in that sense by about 46%, or at least that's the data that they have on it. Now, it also increases the expression and production of a certain adipokine. Now, an adipokine, adipo, fat, kind, signaling molecule, is a signaling molecule that comes from fat cells. And it's basically something that will trigger the adiponectin receptor. This can also be on a fat cell, or it can be on several other different types of cells in your body. But what it does is it will trigger a downstream event that will hit AMPK. And we talked about AMPK a whole lot in cheap. We talked about it a whole lot in slice. And the things that AMPK does, as far as its inhibitory effect on fatty acid synthesis and its promoting effect that it has on fatty acid oxidation, all that is really good. Now. Uh, InnoSlim actually through the, the adiponectin pathway is supposedly caused a 23% increase in AMPK phosphorylation or the activation of AMPK, which is really nice. And this caused a doubling in acetyl-CoA carboxylase phosphorylation. And in the sense of that, that particular enzyme, once phosphorylated, actually shuts off. So that's kind of cool. And that has an inhibitory effect on fatty acid synthesis. But as far as in vitro studies, the adiponectin levels increased substantially more than in vivo, in, in vivo, which is to be expected, but it increased 203% just in an isolated fat cell. So its mechanisms and what it does on the cellular level are pretty well understood. Other than that, you know, the, it's got some really good human data. And, you know, also my rep Ken, 70 pounds, nine months, it's not a joke. But this is the power of the AMPK pathway. So there you go. Last thing I'm going to talk about is an ingredient called BABA. Beta amino isobutyric acid, B A I B A, BABA, also known as three amino isobutyric acid, but they're not all created equal. BABA in itself is actually something that does come in two different isomers a right handed, left handed D form. L form, but the really cool thing about mitoburn from NNB Nutrition is that it is 100% a purified L isomer. So you don't have to worry about any of these potential things that you may get in a racemic mix. Now, the thing about thermal is I had planned on making a BABA product when all of Glaxon originally got formulated. However, I was having a really hard time sourcing and finding a purified L isomer of BABA. Now, there are different kinds of racemic forms that are out there on the market. You can find them. But the thing about it is when BABA was discovered, it was actually in a clinical study where there were a group of clinicians studying the effects of lipoatrophy in HIV patients. And what they found was that their particular nucleotide type of, uh, of uh, drug was breaking down into BABA. And it was breaking down into both forms of BABA, the D form and the L form. Now, what they figured out is that the D form 
had a very separate entire spectrum of, of effects that it would exhibit versus the entire spectrum of effects that the L-form would exhibit. Now, naturally, FAVA is formed as a breakdown metabolite of the amino acid L-valine. If you're doing a strenuous workout and there's some muscle catabolism going down and valine is, you know, going to get broken down along with everything else, it'll actually end up forming L-beba. Now, L-beba is special because it is a myokine. A myokine, myo, muscle kind signaling molecule is a little bit more special. And I mentioned this in regard to this particular chart from last week because the brown adipose tissue is really close to the muscle. And I mentioned in the slice video that they actually have some sort of evolutionary homology because the brown adipocytes will actually express myogenic differentiation factors and they will actually express some sort of muscle proteins, even though they're not morphologically a muscle themselves. But the effect of myokines that would theoretically originate from the muscle cells by proximity would be able to transfer these signaling molecules to the other fat cells. And that is one of the main reasons why BABA has an effect on the browning of white adipose tissue. Now, we did touch on this a little bit with the Aphromoma melagueta and also with Fucoxanthin when we were discussing slice, that, that Fucoxanthin would actually have a, not a browning effect, but an uncoupling effect, which is something that you do look for when you're causing the browning of white fat cells. The other thing was Aphromoma melagueta was another thing that worked on uncoupling in the brown fat cells. So the real cool thing, about BABA in this, in this stack of a spectrum that we have going on with the Glaxon products is it fits in between. So on the far hand of this spectrum over here, you've got Fucoxanthin working on white adipocytes. You've got Aphromoma melagueta working on the brown adipocytes. But that transition from white to brown through this beige or bright state of a fat cell is actually going to be the home base of BABA, which is really cool. So in addition to this, um, I, I touched on the, the NRTI study. And another really cool thing as far as what BABA will do as a myokine, what I don't show on this chart is that muscle is in really cool proximity to bone here. So BABA as a myokine also can actually have a beneficial effect on bone tissue. And it's something that protects osteocytes and uh, decreases uh, bone demineralization and actually can stop that process from happening. And there's actually several rodent hind limb unloading studies where they will actually hang a rat up by their tail in an effort to try to get their leg bones in order to demineralize out of a lack of use. But there's actually been some evidence to show that BABA can have a preserving effect on these bone cells and that doesn't really happen. So the stats on BABA, what is all the stuff that it does? It increases leptin and leptin is a satiety hormone that's usually expressed by the fat cells. It works in opposition to ghrelin, the hunger hormone that pangs you in the bottom of the stomach whenever you're hungry. Um, but it has a normalizing effect. So in people who are usually overweight and a bit leptin deficient, it can help normalize their leptin levels. But normal people, if you've got normal leptin, it's not really much of an issue. It also increases uh, glutathione levels, which is kind of nice. It does have a bit of an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory an anti effect via that. Uh, but it also increases the expression, uh, not just of the microRNA, but also the actual protein itself, of carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, which is particularly important because that's the enzyme that takes the carnitine and takes the fat and brings those guys together so it can go in the mitochondria and turn into CO2. So we do actually hit that third part of this whole story. So the fat comes from you, the carnitine comes from thermal, and then the CPT1 expression is a downstream effect of the beta supplementation. So all this kind of rolls into a pretty concise uh, pathway here. Uh, in addition to that, it also has beneficial effects on fatty acid binding protein 3. That expression also gets increased. Um, but BABA is another thing, according to this fun little chart over here, we'll get some B-roll of this, that BABA will also activate AMPK. Going around in this circle again, anything that activates AMPK is going to have a, a diminishing and inhibitory effect on acetyl-CoA carboxylase 1. This SREBP1C is actually an enzyme that is responsible for the synthesis of various forms of cholesterol and it has an inhibitory effect on that. Through the activation of AMPK by BABA, it also has another anti-inflammatory effect by inhibiting the activity of NFKB in all these different types of cells here. And it increases free fatty acid oxidation, decreases insulin resistance or tendencies toward those things, and mostly muscle and adipocytes. So all along that whole AMPK pathway, it's pretty good. But there's three other things that BABA does do that's still pretty interesting. 
It has a promoting effect on PPAR alpha and PGC1 alpha. PPAR alpha is another master metabolic regulator gene pathway that regards various uh, fatty acid breakdown and, and glucose breakdown. But the activation of PGC1 alpha is actually the master metabolic control of mitochondrial biogenesis. So to create more my mitochondria, the activation of PGC1 alpha is actually necessary. Now, theoretically, if you're increasing the number of mitochondria that you have in your fat or muscle cells, let's just say it's fat cells. If you're increasing the number of mitochondria in a fat cell, you're taking it from being a white adipocyte, which typically only has like one mitochondria, and increasing its mitochondrial number per cell, which makes it more beige or bright. And in a best case scenario, once all that becomes metabolically active, you've got a brown fat cell. And this is something that BABA actually works on. Um, in addition to that, increasing mitochondria in any kind of cell, especially if you're having an effect on preserving the levels of carnitine and increasing the expression of CPT1, as we talked about earlier, your fat burning capacity actually reaches its most optimal level. If you've got full carnitine levels, activation of CPT1, and you've got more mitochondrial replication going on, that's a really good scenario. That's like a perfect kind of storm for fat burning. In addition to this, we've got an inhibitory effect on PPAR alpha. I touched on this in the slice video a little, or PPAR gamma, just caught myself there. It's a lot of, lot of kind of mistakes. You saw what happened earlier. Um, so the inhibitory effect on PPAR gamma, PPAR gamma, as I'd mentioned previously, is a master regulator of adipocyte differentiation. Anytime you need more fat cells, PPAR gamma gets activated and fat gets stored and it grows and it becomes fat cells. But we're inhibiting that action through baby here. And it also has a promoting effect on the activation of PPAR delta, which is my favorite of all the PPARs because it is another master metabolic controller on fatty acid oxidation and glucose utilization as well. It's one of my top favorites. Um, has an inhibitory effect on NFKB again, but we touch on that on both sides, not just through AMPK, but through the activation of PPAR delta. And in addition, PPAR delta activation has a beneficial effect on decreasing insulin resistance as well. Now, in summary, Slice had a gaping hole, but that was by design because we were gonna come out with this thing. And I was scared at first because I wasn't sure if we were gonna able to bring this thing to market until NNB Nutrition and Sean Wells said, hey, guess what? We actually have a purified L-isomer of BABA, to which I said, great. I'll take it. So we have thermal here. It's actually going to be on sale through Sunday at a 25% discount. You use the code PRICEPLOW because they've actually been working with us on a little bit of this stuff. If you use the code PRICEPLOW, you knock 25% off this baby and that comes down to 30 something. 30 something. It's ain't bad. It ain't bad. I'd buy it for 30 something. If I didn't get it for free, I mean, but here we are. So if you log on to glaxon.com, Find Thermal, use the code PRICEPLOW, get a 25% discount and try this thing out for yourself. My suggestion, I would say stack it with Slice because that stack with Slice is a beautiful, sweaty mess that I enjoy every single time. But in addition to that, this is what we got. This is a brand new product. We just dropped it. Just dropped it a couple days ago. Come check it out and we'll see you next time on the Supplement Lab.